Hey guys, this is MathCamp321 presenting a video on section 1.5 of your geometry book, Geometry for Enjoyment and Challenge. And what we're going to cover today in this video are the definitions presented in this section. And unfortunately, there are a lot of them. So I think there's about eight or nine altogether. So I'll try to go through them as quickly as I can and then give you an illustration of each one so you have a good understanding of what these mean. Make sure you copy these definitions in any diagrams into your notebook or your packet, whatever you're using, so that you're prepared for the lesson. Okay, so the first term that we're going to look at is congruent angles. And I'm going to give you the definition in what's called conditional form. So I have to talk for two seconds about what conditional form is. So I'm going to go off to the side and just describe what that is. Conditional form is when you describe a definition in if-then form. And we can generalize this by saying if P then Q. Okay, I'm going to underline the P part in green and I'm going to underline the Q part in orange. Now the P part is known as the hypothesis, and the Q part is known as the conclusion. And yes, you should write that down even though there's not a box for it on your page. You should definitely write that down. Okay, so going back to our first definition, congruent angles. I'm going to present this definition to you in if-then form, giving you the conditional. So what I'm about to write is, if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. A couple things to note here now that I've given you the conditional form. I've used some abbreviations. I use the angle symbol instead of writing the word angle, and I use the congruent symbol instead of writing the word congruent, just to make life a little bit easier. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to underline the hypothesis in green, and the hypothesis is everything that proceeds the word if. So the hypothesis would be two angles have the same measure. And I'm going to underline the conclusion in orange, and that would be all the words that proceed the word then. Now, the reason we make a big deal about the hypothesis and the conclusion is because there is this other form called the converse. And the converse occurs when you interchange the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the converse would be, and I'll write this up here in the upper left corner, would be if Q then P. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write the converse of what we just wrote as the conditional. So I'm going to interchange the orange and the green. Now, it's not going to be a direct interchanging. You might have to change a, a few of the words around to make it make sense. So I'm going to say, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. Okay, so what I've effectively done is I've interchanged the P and the Q parts. So you'll notice in the beginning, the hypothesis of the conditional talks about the same measure. And that idea of the same measure now comes at the end, where before it came from the beginning. And if we look at the end, the conclusion of our original statement, it talks about angles, they, the angles being congruent. And now that comes in the beginning, the angles being congruent. So we've effectively interchanged the P and the Q. We've interchanged the hypothesis and the conclusion. So I'm going to give you a quick illustration now of that. So I'm going to draw for you two angles. So the takeaway from this diagram is that we have two angles and each of them are 25 degrees. They have the same measure, so the conclusion that we can make is that they must be congruent and we can write that accordingly. The C stands for conclusion. Okay, so that first term took a lot of time. I think now that we've gotten that out of the way, the others will go quite a bit quicker. So let's move to obtuse angle. In the conditional form, I'm going to say, if an angle has a measure between 90 and 180, then it is obtuse. Okay, now I'm going to very clearly identify the hypothesis and the conclusion by using the green and the orange. Remember, the hypothesis is everything preceding the word if. So in this case, it would be an angle has a measure between 90 and 180, and the conclusion would be then it is obtuse, or it's obtuse. Now I'm going to formulate the converse by interchanging the P and the Q. If an angle is obtuse, then its measure is between 90 and 180. And just to make it very clear, if we go back to the conditional, the beginning part, the hypothesis, talks about a measure being between 90 and 180. That occurred in the beginning, and now it occurs at the end because we've made that switch.
in, in our conditional, in the end, we talk about an angle being obtuse, and now that occurs in the beginning. Okay, now I'll give you an illustration. Okay, suppose you're walking through the geometry forest, and you stumble upon an angle whose measure is 125. The conclusion that you can make is that it must be obtuse. Okay, the third definition is for right angle. If an angle's measure is exactly 90, then it is a right angle. Okay, I'm going to underline the hypothesis in green. I'm going to underline the conclusion in orange. And I'd like you to stop the video and maybe you could try to formulate the converse before I do. Resume the video when you're done to see if you got it right. Okay, I hope you had an opportunity to try that. The converse would read, if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is exactly 90. Okay, and I'll give you an illustration of that. Okay, suppose you're walking through the geometry forest and you saw this angle E here with that little box in the corner. Well, that indicates that an angle has a measure of 90, which means it must be a right angle. So our conclusion would be angle E is a right angle. And finally, we have collinear points. The definition for collinear points as an if-then statement, a conditional, would be if points exist on the same line, then they are collinear. And I'll identify the hypothesis in green and the conclusion in orange. Again, I'd like you to take a moment and see if you can formulate the converse before I do. So go ahead and pause the video and resume it when you're done to check. Okay, I hope you had a moment to do that. The converse would read, if points are collinear, then they exist on the same line. Okay, and here's an illustration for collinear. Okay, suppose you were walking through the geometry forest and you saw this diagram. Because points M, N, and P all exist on the same line, we can conclude that they are collinear. Okay, so here are our first four definitions, and I think there's four or five more to go, and they'll just continue to get quicker as we go on, but we just need to get through this. Okay, slide two coming up.